from Hollywood. Miss Marjorie Reardon in The Unexpected. The Unexpected. The Unexpected. Life is filled with the unexpected, romantic, tragic, and mysterious endings to our most ordinary actions. Dreams come true, or dreams are shattered by sudden twists of fate in The Unexpected. But first, a word from your announcer. Miss Marjorie Reardon, outstanding motion picture and stage star in Horoscope, a drama of the unexpected. I didn't mean to kill him. Not really. But I knew it was going to happen. The horoscope had told me. Yes, everything started with that fantastic horoscope. Life is written in the stars, madame. And there are no secrets if one is willing to read. Can you really tell the future, Mr. Iran? I'm only interested in that. I want to know what is going to happen. In the heavens, there is no future and no past. The stars know no time, no yesterday, no tomorrow. But I thought that you... Yes, you are expecting predictions, madame. But I do not predict. I can only reveal the journeys that our planets indicate. Part of these journeys has already passed. Part is ahead, and you must differentiate. Oh, I'm afraid I don't understand. It is quite simple. I will interpret several facts. You must determine if they have already happened or if they will occur. Oh, I see. Now, first, you are acquainted with a tall, red-haired man. He... Uh, he will marry you, or perhaps has already married you. Yes, that's my husband. Very well. Next, a friend, a woman of foreign birth, and a quarrel are indicated. A foreigner? That is correct. But I don't know any foreign women. Then she is yet to come. Oh? And someone of great importance to your life vanishes. Of great importance vanishes. Oh, I know. Roger's going to Duluth next Tuesday. Yes, that must be it. No, it is not your husband. A woman, small, dark, someone very close to you. <laughs> there never have been any important women in my life. Certainly none who disappeared suddenly. This woman will. Are you sure that it isn't a man? The stars are always sure. Very well. I is that all? Yes. Except for one thing. Well? There is death in your horoscope. Death? Someone dies, and you are responsible. Oh, I'm afraid The I stars don't... reveal that you are going to kill a man. I didn't believe a word of it. How could that little oily man in the dirty white turban sit there grinning, telling me that I was... that I was going to commit a murder? Oh, it was utterly ridiculous. Impossible. Mr. Aran, that's not true. You're, you're trying to frighten me. I don't know why, but you are. That can't be in my horoscope. It just can't be. The reading is completed, madame. But you can't the be... The stars do not lie, madame. Good afternoon. 
I was trembling as I walked through the dingy velvet curtains and out into the clean air of the, uh, of the street. But then, in the business of shopping, permanent waving, and matineeing, the horoscope slipped out of my mind. I didn't think about Mr. Arand again or the little airless, incense-filled room or the future he had foretold until nearly a week later. It was my bridge afternoon. Martha Perkins and I had been partners as usual, and the game had gone quite well. But as we got up to change tables, Martha turned to me, her eyes hard and glinting. Are you deliberately trying to lose the game, Edith? What are you talking about? If you don't know, it's time you found out. Bridge is usually played according to rules, and a two-bit is considered forcing. But I certainly gave a response. Oh, really, Edith? I think that your playing is getting very tiresome. An incorrect bid is worse than no bid at all. Well, I assure you I'll be glad to get another partner. That doesn't bother me a bit. As a matter of fact, I won't be able to play for a few weeks anyway. I'm going to Canada for the summer. How nice. Yes, isn't it? My mother and father live there. I'm going for a visit. Oh? I didn't know your parents were Canadian. I don't know what difference that makes. And if it's of any interest to you, I'm not an American citizen myself. Now, will you try to concentrate on the cards just a little bit, Edith, if it's not asking too much? I don't know why, but the quarrel with Martha upset me. I was surprised to learn that she was a Canadian. For some reason, it seemed important. And then I remembered the horoscope, the first prediction, a quarrel with a foreign woman. Perhaps there was something to Mr. Arand and his stars. After a moment, I shrugged. Oh, it was too absurd. Canada isn't a foreign country, not really. And Arand was such a fake. Nothing but a cheap fortune teller. The argument with Martha had been a coincidence. Just a coincidence. <laughs> When I got home that night, Roger was waiting for me, sitting in the big chair in the living room. He was holding something in his hand and looked up sharply as I came into the room. Hello, dear. You're late. <gasps> Roger! What, whatever are you doing with a gun? Cleaning it. The man at the store said one should always clean a new revolver before using it. But what's it for? You? For me? Well, I thought since I'm going away for a few days, you might need it. There have been so many robberies in this district lately, and... I don't like the idea of your being alone here at night. Roger, I won't be alone. I'm afraid you will, dear. You see, Sarah left this evening. Left? Yeah. She just walked out, said something about her mother needing her, and that was all the explanation I got. That doesn't seem possible. Uh, servants are all alike nowadays. But, but Sarah was like a part of the family. She's been with us always for years. Well, what can you do about it? She's gone. Oh, it's so strange. Not a bit like her to leave without warning us. I don't know what I'll do without Sarah. I really don't know. Someone very close to you, of great importance in your life, vanishes. Oh, no, it isn't possible. It's another coincidence. What's the matter with you, Edith? What are you mumbling about? What? Why, nothing, nothing at all, Roger. I, I was just a little stunned by Sarah's leaving. Well, don't worry, you'll be all right. Now, here. I want to show you how to use this gun, just in case. No, Roger, I won't touch it. I won't. There's no reason to be afraid. If a person understands firearms, he's all right. People who don't know how to use them are the ones who always get hurt. Don't you understand, Roger? I won't touch that gun. Oh, now, don't be so childish, Edith. It can't bite you. I don't want to kill anyone, Roger. Don't make me kill anyone. Please don't make me kill anyone. What are you talking about? Oh, I can't explain it, but I have a sort of premonition. A feeling that I might... I might shoot somebody and kill them. What utter nonsense, Edith. Oh, yes, I know it is, but that's the way I feel. I can't help it. Oh, very well. In any case, I'll just put the revolver on the table next to your bed. You won't have to touch it unless you need to. But I don't want to. And I don't want to hear any more about it. For heaven's sake, Edith, you're acting like a child. Oh, forget that I ever mentioned the gun and stop being so silly. last, I persuaded myself to go to bed. I thought it was terribly late, and I knew it was when I heard the clock strike. I think I was just dozing off when 
Something awakened me. I sat up suddenly, listening. Oh, it was just a dog. I relaxed again. Oh, no. Someone was on the front porch. I was sure of it. A prowler or a thief or... I went over to the window and peered into the darkness. Yes, there was a figure below me. An ominous, frightening figure, and I had to keep him from breaking into the house. I don't remember taking the gun, but it was in my hand, and as I raised it, I seemed to hear the voice of the astrologer beating against my brain. The stars reveal that you are going to kill a man. The stars reveal that you are going to kill a man. I knew then that the stars had told the truth. My fingers closed over the trigger. You think the story is over, don't you? But wait. Fate takes a hand. Wait for the unexpected. Now for the surprising conclusion of Horoscope, starring Miss Marjorie Reardon, a Hamilton Whitney production written by Robert Libet and Frank Burt and directed by Frank K. Danzig. The gun dropped from my nerveless fingers. And then, as the little acrid gray puffs of smoke circled upward, I rushed down the steps and out onto the porch. A man was crumpled on the floor. A man wearing a white turban that was slowly staining red. His breath came in short gulps and rattled with a dying sound. As a cloud drifted away from the moon, I saw the face of the person I had shot. It wasn't a thief. It was Mr. Arand. Madame, I am so glad. So glad I have time to see you. I had... To tell you... Don't try to talk. I'll get a doctor. No, please. It is too late. I I knew you would be worried and frightened, madame. So I came to tell you not to be concerned. The stars do not say that you will kill anyone. I, I made a terrible mistake. I am so sorry... I read you the wrong horoscope. Horoscope starred Miss Marjorie Reardon. Listen soon for another of your favorite motion picture stars in a drama of The Unexpected. This program was transcribed in Hollywood.